Hello guys, finally I'm back to my office from the small family vacation. You didn't feel that because I scheduled a lot of videos ahead, but unfortunately I couldn't shoot new videos about all the new stuff announced at Laracon US. And to me personally, the most important is Livewire 3. So in this video, finally, I get a chance to review all the new features of Livewire 3 and demonstrate the main ones to you. It wouldn't be a full featured video with all the new features. I chose to emphasize the most important ones in my opinion. For those of you who are familiar with Livewire and want to compare whether it's worth to switch from V2 to V3 in existing projects or in upcoming new projects. And a quick disclaimer, if we take a look at documentation and quick start, the first thing is it's still in beta version. So Livewire 3 at the moment of shooting this video, it's not officially released in full yet, it's in beta version. But it's stable enough, so I tested it out, didn't encounter any major bugs and can present it to you. And let's start with a thing that has nothing to do with the code, but has everything to do with Livewire as a brand. Do you see the URL in the browser? livewire.laravel.com. So what was presented both by Caleb and by Taylor at Laracon US, that Livewire becomes first party citizen of Laravel family, which means it would get kind of more official support from Taylor and the team moving forward. Similarly, actually like Inertia, Livewire and Inertia are both officially or unofficially first party packages now because Taylor has written or rewritten Inertia official docs himself. And Taylor emphasized that at Laracon that he wants Laravel to be a full stack framework no matter what you use for front end Livewire or Inertia. But in this video, let's stick with Livewire. Personally, I'm very glad that Livewire has grown up into kind of first party citizen. And now let's take a look at version three. In summary, if I had to summarize the changes, nothing has changed much. And at the same time, everything has changed. It's a weird combination, I know. But basically what Caleb was trying to do with version three is tackle the issues and address the issues that were discussed and emphasized all over those years of Livewire. So he introduced quite a few shorter syntax ways of doing the same things, more convenient ways to do the same things, including the installation. And I will talk about that in a second. So it's kind of the same live wire, but optimized for better developer experience. And let's start with the installation process that became much more simplified. It was simple enough already, but now it's even more simple. So here I have a fresh Laravel project without any functionality. Livewire is not installed yet. Here's the homepage and now we'll install Livewire according to the docs. So we do compose require Livewire still in beta version, paste that into the terminal. It does all the necessary stuff, success. And then in the version two, you would need to add Livewire styles or Livewire scripts. And then if you need Alpine, you would install Alpine from CDN, for example. Not anymore. This one command is all you need to do to install Livewire. That's it. It's installed. You can use it and you can generate components. So internally now Livewire is built on Alpine JS, which is included by default. And that's all you need to know about installation. And to finish the demonstration of that installation, I've done the same thing as the documentation says, make live wire counter, writing the class and adding that component in a blade view. So the result is this app live wire counter. And this is another change, not app HTTP live wire, but app live wire folder. The component looks the same as version two. The blade file looks also exactly the same. And in the welcome blade, I've just loaded that counter like this. And now that homepage looks like this. So there's plus and minus, which just works again without any live wire styles, live wire scripts or anything more needed after the installation. So it's very easy to start with live wire. The next change is a few new default values, change default values for a very common used features. And I want to show two of them. There maybe are more, but those ones just are the most widely used. So wire model, with title or form title, and I will get to that form part in a minute. By default in version two, it was sending a server request on any change, which means that the validation or other events were happening multiple times for multiple changes, which means live mode. And to prevent that live mode from happening in version two, you had to do wire model defer. 
So in version 3, it's the other way around. Because in most cases, as Caleb emphasized during Laracon US presentation, you don't need live validation that often. You do need that in some autocomplete search or something like that, but in most cases, defer should be the default value, and it is like that in version 3. So wire model is deferred by default, eliminating too many server requests. And then if you do want that live behavior, you introduce that back as wire model live. So it's the other way around. And then also kind of a small thing, but eliminating extra step. So wire submit, it used to be always wire submit prevent. Now prevent is included by default. So it would do the same thing without even you typing prevent specifically. Another new changed default. Now let's get to the forms and CRUDs. What was improved? I will show you two things, validation with rules and form objects. So let's get to that form title. That form is actually an object defining, well, that form. So in your LiveWire component, if you want to create a post or if you want to edit the post, let's open edit post component. You mount that with route model binding from Laravel and then you don't need to define that post model as a property or post title, slug and description, everything as properties individually. Instead, you define a form object and that form object will contain all you need, the internal logic of validation and other stuff. And in your live wire component, you work with this form. So this form update, this form set post value, and then in create post, for example, this form save, this form title, if you need more logic, basically you're working with the form object. And as you can see in this case, I'm reusing the same form object in create post and in edit post, which is one of the benefits. And inside of that form objects, you describe the rules. For example, post, maybe not because it's reused in create and edit. And then you define the individual properties like title and body in my case. So form object is kind of a way of abstracting more complex object from live wire component which used to be pretty huge if you have many fields. So all those fields are defined in form objects and each field may have validation rules with new syntax like this. Using PHP attributes, the new syntax of PHP 8.1, this is how you can define rule for each field. So you don't need to define rules as a variable and array of validation rules. Important thing to note here, that form object concept replaces old behavior of LiveWire 2 and it's mentioned here in the upgrade guide. So if you use something like this in LiveWire version 2, you would not be able to do that anymore, unfortunately. You need to define either individual properties like title and description as variables of component or use form objects. This is the default behavior now. You still can use the old syntax, but for that you need to enable this configuration value, legacy model binding true. So you could call that a breaking change in pattern, but a form object, in my opinion, is more convenient solution to this scenario. The next set of changes in LiveWire 3 are directed towards full page components. So if you use LiveWire instead of Laravel controllers for full page components, each component should have a layout. And in the version two, and I'm showing the docs, this was the syntax, return view in render and you specify the layout or you specify the default layout in LiveWire config. In LiveWire three, you can define the layout for each component like this before render function or before the component itself, before the class, you just define the layout. Also, if we take a look at the documentation of full page components, in addition to layout, you can also specify page title with a similar fashion, similar syntax, title create post. So what Caleb was trying to do is to unify the settings with the help of PHP attributes. Not everyone likes them, I know, but when you get used to them, they become kind of like standard default natural behavior for all LiveWire components. The next change is a new feature of LiveWire 3 called Wire Navigate. And it got a huge positive response from the community because with Wire Navigate, LiveWire becomes SPA solution for single page applications. So before that, in version two, whenever you click some link on LiveWire component, if it's a full page component, you would still get a full page refresh in some cases. 
which kind of defeats the purpose. Now, if you're using full page components and you want to navigate between them, so for example, a behavior of route post edit with edit one or two post, and in the web, I have route get to the live wire component without Laravel controller. This is the page. And if I click edit post, the full page is refreshed. You don't see that very visually, but if you click, it refreshes the full page. Now, all you need to do to get that to SPA behavior to single page application is in the link here, add wire navigate. Now, if we add that to those both edit post with one and two, and we refresh the page and we click and the result is instant. So it doesn't refresh the page, it just re-renders this part. So you don't need any complex setup for single page application for dynamic behavior. And I've tried it even works with Laravel Breeze component. So XNav link, if I add wire navigate to this one, that also worked for me. If we refresh, users also works loads instantly. So if you want to use Livewire as full page components, to achieve single page application behavior. Now with Livewire 3, it's extremely easy to do. Another new feature is a shorter syntax, much shorter syntax for a thing that was already possible, but with longer syntax, which is lazy loading the component. For example, on your page, some component, for example, with some data may load slower because it performs some kind of query, for example, report for analytics or something. And basically your user would have to wait for a few seconds until it actually loads. You can do live wire component lazy, which means in your blade file, in your Laravel blade file, you have a component and then you define lazy here which means that the component will show some kind of placeholder, some kind of loading defined by you before actually rendering the blade. So here's my scenario. In the mount of component, I've put one second sleep, and then there's a function placeholder where you define any HTML that you want to show as loading indicator. And now if I refresh that page, you see loading for a second. You may customize that behavior, introduce some spinner or something like that, but it's that easy. With Livewire component, you define placeholder and in the blade of Laravel, you add lazy, that's it. So now you start to see the pattern of what Caleb was trying to do, shorten and simplify what was already possible. And also along the way, he has rewritten a lot of internals from scratch to use Alpine. So even in version two, I considered Livewire like a very short way to write dynamic pages instead of writing a lot of JavaScript. But now in Livewire three, a lot of syntax options are even shorter. And final change I want to mention in this video is about nested components, which were improved. I haven't had a chance to play around with that in a practical project. So I will just show you the docs and you can read them and I will link the docs and the upgrade guide in the description below as usual. But basically a lot of potential errors with the parent and child nested components were fixed and some new syntax added. Like for example, let's scroll it down. Yep, found it reactive properties. So you can define property as reactive and then any to do's that are added inside the parent component will automatically trigger an update in a child component. Also, there are features like listening for events from children. Also, where did I see that dollar parent variable accessing the parent and much more stuff. Part of that was available in Livewire version two, but in version three, it was improved. So I advise you to read the full page about nested components here. So to summarize this part of the video, it seems like with Livewire three, Caleb and the team tried to move Livewire towards more usage as a full page component for all the architecture of the application instead of just building individual components for small dynamic parts. And to be honest, this is how I've been using Livewire personally for a lot of stuff. This is why my Livewire kit set of components is just actually set of small components like a form, like a table, like a model or something like that. And I've been using Livewire for years for that dynamic behavior of specific parts of the page instead of loading full pages with Livewire. But in Livewire 3, it's more convenient to use Livewire as kind of full stack solution with SPA, if you prefer with layouts and stuff like that. But it's your personal choice how exactly you use Livewire. 
as with everything in web development and coding, it's a tool and how you use that depends on your preference. So these are all the features that I think are most important and even those most important features took quite a long for me to describe. So it's a longer video than a typical one on my channel. And also I'm in progress of reshooting my old course about Livewire from scratch using all the version three features with more practical examples. So on laravaldaily.com, as soon as Livewire 3 hit the official non-beta version, I will make final changes and release the updated course which will be available for premium members. So subscribe to premium membership and get that course and many other courses and premium tutorials. What do you think about these new features? Will you use Livewire 3 versus version 2? Or if you haven't used Livewire yet, will those features convince you to change and adopt Livewire for your new projects? Let's discuss in the comments and see you guys in other videos.